welcome to the channel if you're new to it or you haven't already thumbs up and subscribe um, there may be things on here that uh, will interest you with Blue Sound Monica the channel's all about Blue Sound Monica and today I'm doing a quick video on uh, this new microphone that um, I've had to purchase because my others have finally packed up um, it's uh, manufactured by um, Silverfish I believe British made and here it is this little beauty here um, okay you've heard it at the start there I was playing just over a track um, it's a really fantastic animal to get into I'm only at the early stages with this I'm only just starting to understand it the demos I'm doing today are through a very very small mini amp I use minimal of equipment and then a slightly bigger amp uh, on the second demonstration but they're both um, solid state um, I'm always of the opinion that if you um, if you can get something half decent and work a sound into those categories once you go onto a valve amp then everything is uh, even better obviously on, on bigger gigs but um, you know you use w what you've got and, and if it works for you that's fine uh, that's kind of the, the idea I've got behind it so this microphone, um, absolutely very nicely built, um, uh, good workmanship, they put leather on it and it's wooden front on it. Um, I like the idea, I, have a, I always like the right angle jack at the back, I've got a thing about wanting to put different leads in. Um, just a little idiosyncrasy thing of mine that I like the idea of a right angle jack on the back and the fact that if a lead goes I can change the lead quickly, that is something that... Um, all harp players um, like I guess although some manufacturers they build the leads in or have a specific lead you know obviously to try and keep their business one way but um, but this is a really good idea now um, when you talk about sign I, I'm, I'm only at the uh, relatively basic stages with this and um, when you talk about sound it's all about I, I mean I've spent what 10 or 12 years on one mic I think you know um, and of course all the YouTube stuff I do I use on minimal equipment on absolutely the smallest piece of kit you could ever get on the most basic camera and yet it still stands firm against people who are using mega equipment so um, in my view so um, you know it's not always the case that you need lots of money with these things like the old bluesmen of the day they use what they could get hold of um, you know it's not like it is uh, today um, the signal in this thing is absolutely terrific. It, um, it has width to the sound. Now I've mentioned, on, uh, although I don't do it these days through injury, I had to give up uh, being a jazz saxophonist after 30 some years. And um, you spend all your life in this idea of um, creating sound and looking for width in sound. Um, I won't go into all the ins and outs of that, but that's what you do as a saxophonist, as a modern jazz saxophonist anyway. Now, as a harmonica player, you have your own sound in your head, or you learn to have it. And mine is a, um, a system of a, a gruff roughness with I have in my head of a, the uh, Leslie speaker on a Hammond, and I put all these things in my head. And, and at this stage, I'm only trying just to try and get the sound. You don't really hear that sound on, on, um, on the tube as much with the way that uh, my setup is, but you get kind of an idea. And so you're looking for widths of sound so you can do more with it. That's why people love valve amps, because of that idea. Now, um, this harmonica is, uh, excuse me, harmonica, this microphone has got a lot of uh, body in it at the bottom end for Chicago, for sure. But it's also got the brown sound. Um, I was using um, Bottle of Blues mic, Jim's, uh, Jim McBride's for, for years. And I worked with that for years. Some people frown upon these things because they're not the industry standard. Doesn't matter, you know, blues guys don't worry about that. If it works, it works and that's it. And uh, you get like a slightly soft compression, but the one thing I never quite got was the brown sound that I'd get off my um, 520DX off the normal bullet um, Shaw mics. Um, but of course, my idea was to use very, very small amps and not necessarily go through valve amps where those kind of animals come into their own. Um, and so, but this one um, is amazing because you can use it from 
little stuff all the way up here. Um, obviously, you know, you, it's, a, it's high Z, so you're going to have to go through amps. You know, I'm not going to go through a PA on this thing. But um, the headroom is quite, uh, quite something. And it has got absolute stacks of attitude. So if you want to be a blues guy and you ain't got the attitude, uh, then give this one a miss because um, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks like it did me. And it absolutely uh, hit me like a freight train when I first got onto it. And it, I've had it about a few days now, played around with it. And even now, I'm not, um, there's a lot to work with to get that sound that I want in my head. But you get the brownness in the sound. Um, you know, guys who've got some experience will kind of know what I'm on about. But it's in there, uh, but you've got to find it but to control it. So... My view on this is that um, if you're a guy starting out or you're a guy seasoned veteran, I would suggest that um, <laughs> the sooner you get older one of these things, the better, because you're going to have to work with it. And the sooner you work with something, the sooner that you get control of it. And that's, uh, you know, if you've got about a year's experience or, or more, even guys probably six months in, you know, if you start using these things, um, they will develop well. And of course, for me, um, I always struggle with proper bullet mics because um, it's the hand-holding. I want to concentrate on what I'm doing in here. I don't want to have to think about keeping the cup. You know, I don't want to have to be thinking of my hands aching when I'm trying to improvise. I want to be as relaxed and as natural as possible. So this, uh, this is the mini version and it's an absolutely perfect size. And the gentleman who uh, builds these uh, assures me that the acoustics are exactly the same on this one as the one that is slightly bigger, which, well, I thought maybe it wouldn't be. I thought the one that would be slightly bigger, but he assured me that um, it was. I can't compare it to anything, but uh, all I do is look at the sound that I'm trying to achieve. And um, I'm not interested in the competition. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in what I do. And uh, I've had some experience with these things, and I would uh, suggest that this particular mic is something that, um, uh, you know, harmonica players who are serious about the business would want. Um, I must point out there's no invested interest here. Um, I'm not an endorsee, so there's no um, conflict of interest that you find many times on the net when people tell you that they're an endorsee for a piece of kit. Uh, okay, so there's nothing, I'm just doing this purely off uh, the love of playing harmonica and the joy of um, discovering new things. So, Silverfish, it's kind of, I think this one's called a, a special, I can't remember, I'm not up on that, but they, they call it a kind of bullet. And if you'll see at the end, the batteries have gone on my uh, delay pedal, and I've really messed it up really. <laughs> the batteries have gone, but you'll hear me, I kind of do like a little machine gun effect. Uh, yes, I've put some delay on there, um, I, that's why the batteries went in the delay pedal, but um, I just put it on because that's the way I play. I always play with a delay pedal. I don't play flat, you know, um, although you would probably get a better indication of the actual signal if I was playing flat. But I always play with some, uh, when I'm out and about, play with delay, so that's kind of what I've done here. Probably overdone it a bit. Um, just so that it feeds back and I'm trying to look for a signal. And of course, I'm still trying to work this thing in, but there's an awful lot of scope. And it's that width of sound that uh, musicians, wind players, brass players, they, they're looking for all the time, the width in the sound, because that's where everything takes shape. And as you develop, you develop the um, idea of having a sound in your head, and then that's what you work for. All right. So, this is a great piece of kit, the Silverfish, I think this is called, um, what did I say, Special or whatever. Um, I'm very, very impressed with it and uh, I'm only at the beginner stages with it. Alright, I hope that's uh, useful to some people. Uh, thumbs up and subscribe, let's say, I do Skype lessons face to face uh, now, although things are easing down. Hopefully, fingers crossed, we're getting back to it and um, let's all keep harping. All right, I'll catch you on the rebound.
time to cut now. Let's cut even further. Different harps will have a different response. A harp. Let's uh, play a little darker for a bit.